Hey guys, to be honest, I don't know if some of what I'm posting is obvious, um, but I think there are people who genuinely suffer and don't know what to do about it. Actually, I think there's a lot of them. I don't know if any of them are watching this video, but let's go for it. And for people who have found some degree of love in their life, maybe this can be a reminder. Anyway, I just want to share. So, the name of the video that occurred to me was, There Are No Barriers to Love. But then I realized, well, there are. But I'm still going to call it, There Are No Barriers to Love, because I realized that the barriers to love really don't exist. The barriers to love are imaginary. So they seem like they're there, but they're not. So really, there are no barriers to love. So what are these imaginary barriers? Um, let's use some examples. So I myself can feel anxious, can have some suffering going on, can feel funky. Mm can make a mistake, can say something hurtful, um, all of these things, but none of these things are barriers to love. Um, it's not a barrier to, to be anxious, it's not a barrier to have suffering, it's not a barrier to have a human experience. Um, you don't need perfection first to find to find love. It's not necessary, in fact. The search for perfection actually is one of these imaginary barriers to love. So if you think, oh my god, I'm suffering and I need to find the way to stop suffering. And the more you insist on getting rid of that suffering, you're actually creating your own barrier to love. Love accepts that suffering, love accepts your humanity, love accepts your mistakes, and it's not some something that's written in scripture that somebody says, well, God accepts your mistakes. Maybe the original scripture was a metaphor, but it's just been my experience, and it's been the experience of many spiritual teachers and of many people, um, that absolutely none of that matters. Okay, you've, you're having a human experience. You're having some suffering. Maybe depression, doubt, frustration. None of these things matter. You don't need to fight harder to get rid of these things. You just have to accept them. So that's really it. And the, there are no barriers to love. None of these perceived negative things or barriers. You don't need to overcome them in order to receive love, to experience love. And I'm speaking on an internal level, okay? Um, and on an external level, too. You absolutely don't need to be perfect to find a partner by any means. Um, you don't need to have it all together. I mean, yes, if you're shooting up, shooting up heroin every day, you're probably not ready to have a good partner, but, <laughs> you know, just because you suffer sometimes, or even a lot of the time, doesn't mean you're not worthy of external love. But, um, so that's very true. And internal love also, in the sense that the experience of love, and I hope you know what the experience of love feels like. It's, you know, it's almost better to be poetic about it than to speak in prose, but, you know, just that experience of the deep intensity and deep meaning of life, and not some meaning that's, oh, be a good person, that's the meaning of life, that's, um, that's a, ex that's a meaning that you attribute to life, and I don't think that's a bad thing, per se, but I disagree if someone says, well, that's the meaning of life, to be a good person, that, that's up to you to decide, I think that's great, but it's, it's not universal, nor is it eat, drink, and be merry. That's not the meaning of life either. There is no meaning to life. 
It's not written in a book anywhere, and if it is, that book is written by humans, remember. But um, when you experience love, you feel the deep intensity of being alive, the deep intensity and, and the deep meaning of just what it means to be alive. And there's no words for it, and when you feel that, everything makes sense. There's no... You stop fighting. Um, there might be great bliss. There might be tears. There might be pain, but a release of pain. It could be tears of joy, tears of pain, oftentimes both at the same time. There's not much of a difference. There might be great anger. There might be great excitement. There might just be deep peace, but when it's love, it's just like a... Ah. Like a breath of fresh air. And in that space, that's really all that you're looking for, um, in my experience. Um, of course, you know, in life, we want to do things. Some people want to open a restaurant. Some people want to become better guitar players. Some people want to travel the world. And of course, those are all wonderful things. But on the psychological level, what's eating at your soul is not the fact that you can't travel to China this year. What's eating at your soul is the lack of love. Um, so if you can experience love, then everything else is fine. And one, once you taste it deeply, I think we hopefully all experience it to some degree or another it all, it all, at some point in our life. But once you taste it deeply... There's really no more going astray. Now you know what, what it is. Maybe you could call that the awakening moment. I don't know. The self-realization. I'm, I'm not big on those terms. I don't think it needs to be so... boxed out or so... so I don't think it needs to be so square. Love is love. Um... But anyway, once you feel that deep love, once you once you got it, then there's no going back. Now you know that that's it. Um, in my experience, you will, you could, and you most likely will go astray. But um, with time and patience, you find, you kind of get the knack. There's no guidebook. There's methods like meditation, total intensity dance. There's methods um, to get you back to love, but really there's no guidebook. It's just you get a knack for it. It's like you get a knack for, I mean, you know, you know how to walk. Who who taught you how to walk? I mean, you just get up and do it. So it's the same thing with with love. You get a knack for it, and you get better at realizing what's going to because oh, you're not gonna, you can't force love, but you realize what's going to allow love in, and what's going to keep it out. As I said, the video says there's no barriers to love, so you come to realize, again, just speaking from my experience, you come to realize that there are no barriers, and when you feel your humanity, your anxiety, your funk, your depression, your anger, um, or even the joy and the bliss and the sexuality and the love when you feel these things there's no need to go on the defensive or to go on the attack and say no this is wrong I mean if that comes up then that has to be accepted too but that's ultimately not the right direction you don't need to defeat yourself maybe that's a path I've heard that path works for some the, just for a freakish few who can just beat themselves into submission it's not been my path. I, I have not been able to beat myself into submission. I'm lazy. Um, I'm cool with that. Um, you don't need to go to war with yourself. You don't need to be superhuman. Just be human. Just be anxious. Be sexual. Be angry. Be funky. That's all fine. None of that's going to get in the way of love. Um the only barrier to love, if there is one, again, it's imaginary, it's this idea that you need to change something. That's just an idea. It's not, it exists in your ego. It doesn't exist in reality. So ego really doesn't have any substance. 
you know, just because you think, oh my god, I need to change something. I mean, that's just on the visceral level, that's just resistance. It's not actually a truth in and of itself. I hope I explained that. Um, yeah, and once you feel it, you've got what you need, and it will come and go. And, but it, I, once you really deeply experience it, I feel like it stays with you permanently to a greater or lesser degree, but it's hard to go astray after that because it's always with you to some degree. Um, and you, again, you find the knack to get back to it. And once you get there, well, you know, it's not, it is just, you know, it is the end of the journey in some ways. Once you feel love, I mean, where else is there to go? Just enjoy your life. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Um, be with who you want to be with. That's it. There's not much else to it. Um, there's not much else. There's nowhere else to go. But, you know, there will still be things that, of course, we, we want to overcome suffering completely. But I find the way that we do that is to become more associated with love, um, to, to get the knack, to find the knack to experience love. Once we find that knack, we're identified more with love and we can kind of process our suffering and the wounds behind it and our fears. Um, these things can be processed in the presence of love. So it's, it's the best short-term solution is love because once you experience love, that's it, basically. But long-term, um, this is how we heal also. In the presence of love, your wounds heal, you'll cry, you'll grieve. Um, You'll know, release your anger in a healthy way. Um, so again, it's the best short-term solution. It's the best long-term solution for your psychological suffering. Um, I just want to say, um, also, it's very important to be natural. In my experience, if you are holding back if you're not being honest and of course you can't be you can't just go into the streets and run around naked honesty you can but you're there's no need for it but what i mean is emotional honesty firstly with yourself if you're anxious just be anxious just recognize it and own it and live it if you're depressed just be pressed and to be depressed recognize it own it live it share it with somebody that's important too you don't have to share it with everybody but share it with your significant other Share it with your best friend. Share it with somebody. Just be authentic. Um, be natural. Do what comes naturally to you. What's easiest for you. Don't hold back. Don't. It's some some holding back is natural, but if you can, if what you really want to do is talk to that girl, then talk to that girl. You know. Um, if what you really want to do is scream, then scream. Um, if you really want to run around naked, then run around naked. But again, you know, within reason, maybe you should not run around naked in the street, but you can run around naked in your, in your flat, you know, just be authentic with your desires. Don't put on, don't be fake. Of course, if you go to work and you're depressed, you're not going to, You're not going to go and just cry your eyes out at work. You have to put on some sort of a mask. But in your personal life, don't wear a mask. Do not wear a mask as much as possible, especially with those you're closest to. There's no need for it. Don't. If you're sad, don't smile. And uh, if you're joyful, then be joyful. If you're angry, then be angry. There's no need to fight with yourself. So that's important, too. Um, there are no barriers to love. Whatever you are is what it is. The path is accepting that deep, more deeply. The path is allowing all of that. The path is not fighting with yourself. Um, again, I've heard maybe for some people it works that way, but it's not been my experience. And I think for most people that fighting with yourself is really just the resistance. And... Um, Resistance is suffering, so ulti ultimately, the more you resist, the more you hang on to your armor, the more you're going to suffer. So the way to allow love in is to open yourself up, take the armor off, accept yourself as you are, and love will start filling you up. Once love starts filling you up, then you've solved your problem. 
Alright guys, hope that helps. Take care.